loss of limbs, crushing, electrocution, it's a death trap. Being on top of half lifting London. You don't have enough time to react and to think, oh my god, there's not enough space. It's trespass, they're not supposed to be in the lift. What are you doing tonight then? Surfing lift somewhere. I'm George King and I'm an extreme athlete. I spend my life pushing my mind and my body and constantly challenging myself to push the boundaries of what's possible. In this series, I'm meeting other young people who engage in risky and sometimes illegal activities to get their kicks. I want to understand the dangers they face, find out what motivates them and to get as close as possible to their experience. These activities are extremely dangerous. Do not attempt to recreate them. Lift surfing is the act of riding a lift either standing on top of it or hanging from below. I've got to admit, I've done it myself. I know it was dangerous and I certainly wouldn't encourage it. But from what I understand, it's, there's more to it. Look online and you'll see that there's a secretive and dangerous world. Thrill seekers break into buildings, usually at night. Numerous people have died or been injured, often in gruesome fashion. People have fallen down elevator shafts, collided with heavy metal counterweights, or gotten squashed in sharp walls. I hope to track down one of the country's most notorious lift surfers, but first I meet up with Jess and John, two lift safety consultants who can show me the dangers of lift surfing. Make sure you stay within the, within the handrail. We don't want any body parts sticking over the handrail. Probably your biggest decapitation risk is looking over that edge as that's coming down behind you. So I can see as we're coming up, the space becomes a bit more constricted. You don't have enough time to react and to think, oh my God, there's not enough space, I'm going to crouch now. It's really dangerous. There's just so much to go wrong. It's a massive hazard. I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. After our controlled ride on top of the lift, Jazz allowed me to go down into the pit before lowering the lift car down on top of us. Okay. You'll quickly get a feeling for the confined space and the crushing. Yeah, it's close. It is close and it would come even lower yeah. still on normal operation. It's easy to have peace of mind when you've got a professional there who's controlling it, but if I was by myself in that pit, then I can see that being extremely disconcerting. John, I've got to admit it to you, I infiltrate buildings, I've even lift surf. What's your take on that? You're here now, you, you, you're lucky that nothing happened to you, but it could have been so different. For someone who's untrained, it really is dicing with death potentially because there's all the hazards of falling, crushing, electrocution, and lifts are very unpredictable when you're not controlling them. The scene of secretive surfers who post their videos anonymously are very hard to reach, but one of them, one of the most well-known, has agreed to meet me. He goes by the name of Benno Liss. He wanted to protect his real identity, so we have disguised his voice. How long have you been interested in lift surfing for? Lift surfing about six years, lifts in general, 12 years. Almost half the lifts in London I've been on top of. The only ones I've been on the other ones with so much security. Is it dangerous? It is dangerous and you don't know what you're doing. Talk to me about the ways in which you access lifts. Those keys, those are worth £300 each, almost of 500 to 1000 what other things can you do with lifts? Riding the counterweight up as the lift goes down. You can dangle from the top of the lift shaft and then you get a 100 meter drop below you. Going on rooftops. But for me, it's not just a fuel seeking thing. Because looking at different lifts, you realise that there's so little similarities between them, there's just lots of stuff to learn and it can become a full on hobby. So, what are you doing tonight then? Surfing lift somewhere. He's more of my favourite this very secret nowadays. We can stand on the pier, which is public, and watch me and hope we in there. So, what's the biggest risk you have with lift surfing? Angry people that see me and don't have a clue what I'm doing. So, you see the people who react to what you do as the dangerous thing? Yeah, that's all. obsessed with every single detail and part. I, I think part of the game is it's a puzzle and it's it's like he's trying to find collect all the parts and put them together and 
I can see it being extremely satisfying. After surfing the tower block lift, Benno takes me to a second location. Talk to me about the lift inside this building. This is one of the lowest lifts in the country. This is where it's two separate lifts in the lift shop, one above the other. So it's completely independently two running lifts. And in this hospital, they've disguised the lift so you don't realise there's anything unusual because they think the patients would be scared if they knew what was really going on in the lift shop. But it does not in any way disguise the people in the lift. There's an absolute addiction to it. He's completely obsessed with what he does. I did ask him how he feels when he hasn't surfed a lift for a long time, but he, he responded by saying that that's never happened. <laughs> you know, it's a clear indication he's completely addicted. After all of that, having lift surfed Rogue before and done it now within a controlled environment, you need to know what's going on in order to do it safely. It's starkly fascinating hearing from John that no matter how trained you are as an engineer, things can go wrong. There are machines at the end of the day and people do die. There's a lot of hazards, if it be electrocution, crushing. There's so many different variables to take control of and if you don't have the knowledge, it can easily become a death trap. 